Yeah. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We come out here week in, week out to tell you so-called blacks and Americans and Spanish that you're the royal children of God and to come back home to the Father God, Yahweh, in the name of his heavenly son, Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashem Wamalak Yahweh Shah, who is the Father and the Son. We also want to say, man, our uh, peace to our brother Dwayne Haskins, man. Hope the Most High have mercy on your soul, Aunt, man. Whatever you did in your past life, man, we hope the Most High bless you and hope you rest in power, man. Hope the Most High forgive you of your sins now, man. Sad, sad story, man. Brother walking down the highway, just get hit by a car. It's called judgment. You walk, probably ran across some brothers bringing out the word. Might have got a little disrespectful. But, you know, we don't really know that, man. Just hope and pray. Let the brother get the peace that he deserves up there, man. This this kingdom is not our rest, man. This kingdom is not for the so-called black man, the so-called woman, the so-called Hispanic, and the so-called Native American man, woman, and child, man. It's not. Our kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, which is coming soon and surely. Right? Let me get First Peter four and eleven, man. Let me get Isaiah 58 and 1. And then after you give me that, let me get uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Right? So we come out here week in and week out to tell you so-called black state of Americans and Hispanics that you're the real children of God, man. And y'all gonna hear out the words of the Most High God. Always and forever, man. We always say, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Holy Bible, and nothing else. Right? Got the first praises. Kind, kind, kind. Just bring that out. First Peter 4 and 11. Read. The book of First Peter. Chapter 4 and verse 11. Yeah. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Right, so when we come out here, people always be like, oh, what does that mean to you? No, 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 I know what that means to me. It's what the Most High said, what the pages said, what the Bible says. What the Most High told us to say, man. We ain't speaking of our own words up here. We're not speaking of our own free will. We're speaking of the words of Yahweh, Bashem wa Malak Yahweh Shah, man. Right. Who is the Father and the Son, who the world in the cause Jesus Christ. We're not out here to tell y'all how we feel. No, we out here to tell you how the Lord feels. About us and about the other damn nations, man. The heathen nations that the Lord doesn't give a damn about, man. The Gentiles of the other nations not the gentiles of the of the israelites who don't know who they are not the hellenized jews man not the americanized cool negroes like terry cruz and stephen a smith no man he talking about the israelites man the israelites that's willing to come back to following the law of statutes and commandments the so-called black man the so-called native american man the so-called hispanic man and the so-called and the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American woman and child, huh? Well, that's who we out here for. We ain't out here for nobody else. We out here for our people. And our people tend to get upset about it. Other people tend to get upset that we not out here trying to bring everybody together. But bringing everybody together is what got us into this situation in the first place, man. Let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 68, man. Trying to, trying to be with everybody got us in the situation that we're in today, man. Right? Look at Isaiah 58 and 1. Read that. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Cry aloud, spare not. Right? Lift up thy voice like a trumpet uh -huh. and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Right? So this is what we come out here to do, man. We come out here to cry out to our people, man. Well, listen. This is what y'all doing wrong. Y'all out here trying to integrate with all these damn people, man. Integrate with all these damn heathens. The most I don't want you to integrate with, your, with these dead heathens, man. He wants you to be with your own people, man. He wants you to be with their own, your own kind, the Israelites. When we start falling off and we, we start integrating with these people, man, we become low to a lower state and they go up to a higher state, man. Matter of fact, drop that. Let me get uh, Sarak. Uh, what's that? Sarak 10 and 12. Yeah, come on, read. It's the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Right, the Most High told us to gather together, man. The nation not desired. 
The nation not desired is the Israelite, man. The so-called blacks, the Americans, and the Spanish, man. We are the nation not desired. We are the people that no other nation likes, man. We are the people that wants to be forgot about. That don't even want to be their own people, but everybody else want to be them, man. Does the so-called white man want to be an Israelite? So-called East Indian, the Ishmaelite, uh, who are the Arabs, man, they want to be an Israelite? You got everybody in the world want to be a damn Israelite except for the so-called Black Native Amer Americans and Hispanics who are the actual Israelites that the Bible speak of, man. You got people that would rather say I'm not an Israelite and, and denounce the fact that they're Israelite because they want to be a part of this world, man. Got that sound right talking to me? Read that. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12 and verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like his iron rusted. So is his wickedness. Right, so the most High told us to never trust our enemies, man. The most High told us never to trust the so-called white man, man, because that's our damn enemy from the beginning. And every time we integrate with them damn heathens, man, we always become at a lower state. And it's Bible speaks on this. We're not supposed to integrate with everybody, man. We're supposed to be of our own nation, man. When you look at Black Wall Street, man, we was thriving during the time of their Great Depression. The Great, Dep the Great Depression happened in 1929, man, through 1935. Guess when Black Wall Street was thriving? From 1929 to 1934, man, until they bombed it and destroyed it and shot everything down. We was the ones making the money. We was the ones making the profit. We was the ones eating steak and potatoes, man, while they was out here eating coal, coal dirt, and mud pies, man. Mud Pie wasn't a Mud Pie wasn't a, isn't a figment of the imagination. This is what they was this is what these damn Edomites, these white people was actually eating in the 1920s. Right? They was eating goddamn mud pies because their economy was going to ish. While our economy was starving, man. We had our own police force, our own firefighters, our own doctors, lawyers, and court system, man. And we was doing what we were supposed to do. And we was making our own selves profitable and rich by joining ourselves together. All, all Negroes everywhere wanted to come to where we was at, man. Like Black Wall Street doing what we were supposed to be doing. Right? Doing what we were supposed to be doing. Gathering ourselves together and being away from uh, being away from people who had us oppressed for over 500 years, man. Huh? Had us oppressed for all this time. And people wonder why we come out here and they say, oh man, they the angry Israelites. American men don't have anything in the world to be mad about, man. They don't, we don't got nothing to be mad at. The so-called Native American man and woman and child was slaughtered. Over 90 million of them that was living on this land, man. You brought over y'all raped, robbed, and pillaged the Hispanic people and then made them speak Spanish, man. The goddamn Spaniards, man. Y'all brought the so-called Negro man over here on slave ships in, the, in some of the harshest conditions while our ancestors would jump in the water to be eaten by sh the, be eaten by sharks then serve bodies. Our ancestors was peeing and pooping and having period blood on themselves when they was getting traveled over here on these damn slave ships, man. You telling me that we don't have nothing to be worried about? We shouldn't be mad? We shouldn't be upset? We shouldn't be angry? We Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, man. You, you telling me that we shouldn't be feeling the type of way because of these things? You saying that we just the angry Israelites that come out here and yell at and yell at people? No, we don't yell at people. We yell at our people, man. We try to get our people to act right. We tell our people what the deal is, man. And if you come with a certain energy, guess what, man? We're gonna come with that certain energy back, man. We men in the air, man. We don't fear nobody up here. We only fear the most high God the Howard, man. We don't fear nothing else, man. If you be, guess what? Why would I fear you? I fear somebody who can't be. I fear somebody who take your soul out of your body while you stand there, man. But, like, ain't nobody worried about that, man. You got Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Read that. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. Well, it says, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, man. Me and my brothers up there, we wise, man. We wise to the evil that was done in this world. We never gonna sit back and be like, oh no, that wasn't them. No, it is them because we still being systematically oppressed to this day, man. Right. You still being systematically oppressed. You still getting 
break. You're still getting stopped and frisked. You're still getting knees on your neck. You're still getting shot in your back. You're still getting all types of things, man. So if you sit here telling us that we still not oppressed to this day, man, we are. We're the only people in the world where cops patrol all day, every night, man. Only people in the world where they drop off guns and drugs into your neighborhoods, man. They don't drop off guns and drugs in a, in, into white people's neighborhoods, man. But they drop off junk guns and drugs in our neighborhoods. How the hell do you get? How do you? How the hell do you get Colombian cocaine, man? What Negro you know got a boat? In the 1970s, how the hell did they get cocaine over here, man? What Negro had cocaine, bro? That joint was dropped off, and the feds dished it out, man. They gave it to you. They put it in your neighborhoods. They had to get rid of the bloods and the crips, and they put drugs in the they put the drugs in the put drugs in the middle of them, man, so they could fight over something. We need yo, listen. That's their territory. That's their territory now. You sell over here, they sell over there. Now, if you cross this line, we got a problem. If you kill and now you kill one of mine, now we now we had an all out war. Do bloods and crips even know what they're fighting about anymore? Do they even know the history of bloods and crips? Bloods, Bloods and Crips was originated to stop the police brutality that was going on in black neighborhoods, man. That's why the Bloods and Crips was created, man. To, to, to protect us from them, man. And then they had to change it into something else. The Black Panthers, the same thing, man. They was created. The Black Panthers created themselves to protect themselves from the damn white man, man. From what the atrocities that they were doing to our people. All these things had they had in common right that they wanted to protect their people but the one thing that they didn't do was follow the law of commandments of the most high god and that's why you can't stop the israelites man this is why you can't stop the israelites today because we got something more powerful on our side man it ain't guns it ain't money and it ain't drugs it's the invisible god that you cannot see that is a man of war and you cannot stop us because we got the lord on our side man the Lord kills. The Lord makes alive, man. The Lord does all these things. The Most High will put you to death, left and right, and we don't even have to touch you. We've seen it. We've heard it. These are things that the Most High do, man. We read stories on them. That you can look up and then go to the place where this stuff actually happened. And then some places it's just inhabitable and you can't go there. Right? Go ahead with your precept, man. Look at Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour these shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Right, so he said all our adversaries, every one of them, man, so all the other nations that are not Israelites, man, they're going into captivity, man. They're going to be devoured, just like how they try to devour us, just like how they try to make sure that we were no more in, a, in remembrance. Let me get Psalms, the 83rd chapter, all right? Let me get the 83rd Psalm. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they tried to make sure that we were no longer in remembrance. They tried to make sure that Israel wasn't here anymore. They tried to make sure that we didn't know who we were as a nation of people. But guess what, man? The Most High said he was going to leave his righteous remnant of people that was going to follow the law of statutes commandments. That was going to come out here week in, week out to tell the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics in this hemisphere that they're the royal, the royal children of God and God's coming back to save them from this wicked, wicked society known as spiritual Sodom in the world, man, in Egypt. The Mosai is going to make sure to recompense this place everything of what they did, right? Go ahead, read. No. It says, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, right. and all they that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Right, and all they that prey upon us will he give for a prey, man. So every one of them that hunt us down, man, put knees on their neck, shoot us in the back, why we not doing nothing, man? Shoot us in the car, talking about they fear for their life, man. Guess what? The man, the Most High, going to give them back to us as a prey, man. We're going to hunt them down. We're going to turn from the fishers and go back to the hunters, man. We're going to stop fishing for our people to tell y'all. We're going to stop telling y'all that y'all are so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, are the Israelites of the Bible, man. We're going to line up us that's on this corner, my brothers that's over there on 11th and Market, my brothers that's on Temple Market, wherever Sakari is right now, my brothers from GMS that's all the way down there, man. It's going to be times where they not going to be around no more. You're not going to be able to see them. And you're going to be looking for us. Y'all going to be looking for the answers that y'all should have been listening for now. And guess what, man? It ain't going to be nowhere. It's called the famine of the word. 
the most high is going to make sure that we are good and y'all you know i'm saying y'all just gonna be out of luck man right before you get before you get that precept i want to read this psalms 83 right yeah start that one read it's the book of psalms chapter 83 and verse 1 verse 2 for lo thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up the head Right, so they that head is lifted up the head, man. This is all these other nations that hate the children of Israel, right? Read. Verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Verse 4. They have said, Come and let, the, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel be no more in remembrance, man. So from now, from all this time, man, we ain't hear about Israelites until what, 1960s? Right? About that, you ain't heard the name of Israel unless you had some people that was actually raised as an Israelite who knew that they was Israelites, right? Had the grandparents raise the children up to understand who they was as a nation of people. But other than that, man, you didn't hear about Israelites, man, because the name of Israel was no more in remembrance. And so the Most High woke brothers up. The Most High gave them that knowledge. The Most High put it on their spirit to understand who they were as a nation of people, man. Understanding that we the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Understanding that we are the fastest quote-unquote religion ever in the world, man. Quote-unquote because we're not a religion, man. We are nationality. The scriptures tell us we are nationality, man. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel had, seven, had 12 sons. And with those 12 sons, you get the Israelites, man. So again... With all that being said, man, we are, the name of Israel was no more in remembrance. Man, we didn't know who we was as a nation of people. But now we know. We opened this book and we read it, man. We opened this book and now we understand what is going on. We understand what the, what the Bible is talking about. We understand what the, who the Lord is speaking to in the so-called Old Testament, in the so-called New Testament, man. The name of Israel is no longer is no longer going to be not remembered because guess what you're going to have brothers on these street corners saying come yasharala all the time which means wise israel man the name israel will always be in remembrance man and guess what we are going to be leading the new kingdom man right you got precept read that precept the book of amos chapter 8 verse 11 behold the days come saith the lord god that i will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Right, bro, of hearing the words of the Lord. What does that mean, right? Like, oh, man, I got the Bible all day, every day. No, but what did Jesus say? The world who ignorant called Jesus Christ say, man? Jesus said out of his mouth that this word must be preached over all over the world, and then the end shall come, man. You, Everybody got the Bible. Christianity been around for 2,022 years, man. Roman Catholic Church been around for like 1,800 years. Islam been around for 1,300 years. Buddhism, all over the world. Jehovah's Witnesses, all over the world, man. You got all these religions that's all over the world, but the fastest growing religion, quote unquote religion, the Hebrew Israelites from 1960 to now, man. And all these end time prophecies is happening in the world today, man. Because guess what? Through the power of YouTube, through the power of Clubhouse, through the power of brothers just going out on street corners telling their people who the hell we are, man. The Most High said that this word is going to be preached unto every nation, to every person that's ever walking the face of the earth right now. And we are going to tell you who you are, how the world is going to end, and what's coming afterwards, man. And guess what? That's happening. And now you see the world is coming to an end, man. Now you see America is not as mighty as it is. We was telling you that Russia was going to invade Ukraine, and it happened. China's going to invade Taiwan. Guess what? That's going to happen. World War III is going to happen. Famine in America is going to happen. But when y'all come out here looking for us, man, the famine or the word is going to happen. Because we're not going to be out here anymore. We're going to be doing what we have to do to keep our families safe. To keep ourselves safe. And y'all gonna be looking for the Israelites. Who am I supposed to be praying to? What was his name? What was his name again? In the name of who? Because God ain't answering your prayers now, man. Because he said, He that turneth away his ear from listening to the to listening to the law, his prayer shall be an abomination, man. So everybody that's walking around that's a so-called black man, so-called Hispanic man, so-called Native American man, right? Woman and child. If y'all turn away, y'all air from hearing the words of the Most High God, man, your prayer is an abomination unto the Lord. Read. 
didn't believe it. We went turn right to this right chapter. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 1. Bring it out. Give ear, O oh my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. And so it says, yo, my people, man. You gotta give ear to the Lord. You gotta hear the words that's coming out of our mouths, man. Not even out of our mouths. Because we've read in First Peter 4 and 11, the most high gives the increase. The most high give the most high is speaking to you right now. I'm just a puppet. The most high is using me to pray to give you this word, man. To give you this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you gotta respect the law, man. Oh my people, to my he's like, oh my people to my law, man. You gotta listen to this law, man. You gotta listen to the law of statutes and commandments. You gotta follow the law of statutes and commandments. You gotta listen to the word that come out of the Lord's mouth, right, Reed? Verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Right, so we so we we listen to the dark parables. If you know who the world enemy calls Jesus Christ, he always spoke in parables. And we're able to break these parables down. We under we able to understand what these parables are talking about, man. We understand what's going on with these parables. We're able to tell you why he said what he said over here. Why he why he said what he said over there, man. Who gonna make it, who not gonna make it? What's what what's this parable mean when he was talking to this person? What does that mean when he was talking to Peter? We're able to do it, man. Because we listening to the laws. We understand the law. You cannot understand the Bible if you do not follow the law, statutes, and commandments. It says wisdom cannot enter uh, into corruption, man. If you are a corrupt spirit, Most High cannot give you wisdom. He will not give you wisdom. If you're not following the law, statutes, commandments, if you're eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster, you're not putting fringes on. A woman, woman, you're not in a dress, dress modestly, man. You're not going to get wisdom. You're corrupt, and wisdom will not enter into a corrupt mind. All the corruption that you're dealing with, all the corruption that you're doing, you'll never get the wisdom of knowledge or understanding of the Lord because you're not following what he told you to do. But if you start to follow what the Lord tell you to do, man, keep the feast days, man. Passover's coming up. Being able to uh, being able to do what you're supposed to do uh, health-wise and food-wise and understanding what to, do with this, what to do with that and what to do with this. If the Lord tell you to season your food, you better season your damn food, man. The Lord tell you, if the Lord tell you to to bury your feces, man, you better bury your feces, man. You gotta be able to you gotta be able to find the obscure laws, man, in the Bible and be able to understand what the heck that's talking about or what to do. You got laws pertaining to men. You got laws pertaining to women. You got laws pertaining to children, man. You got all types of laws all over the scriptures, man. You gotta be able to understand these laws. You gotta be able to. You gotta be able to know when a when a woman is on when is on her cycle, man, that she gotta put herself away for seven days until she's clean, man. And then she takes a purifying and then she takes a purifying bath, she prays to the Lord, and then she can come back into the congregation. Hey, you saw this finished, man. It's more on that. Go ahead, right? Read. Yeah. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 78, and verse 2. Yeah. I will open my mouth in a parable. Uh -huh. I will utter dark sayings of old. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of Yahweh and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. We will not hide it from our children, man. We gonna tell, we tell our children all the time, man. I got two children, one on the way, man. We the greatest people on earth. Can't nobody take that from me. We gotta do what we gotta do, man. The Most High has beautiful and wonderful works, man. What we do out here is tell you that you're the greatest people on earth man yo look look at the sky look at the ocean man this is what that's a wonderful work of the lord man that is a work that is a wonderful work of the lord man all it see see what i'm saying see see what i'm saying you see you see what i'm saying you see this this is why this is why he, he walked by he walked by all the time he he walk up he walks he walk past all the time he says shalom he says assalamu alaikum like he knows who we are he come out all the time man and he's and, and you see how the demon just came right out of, I said he said shalom mm -mm. mm -mm. because I know you man like yo you do it all the time I see you all the time man you see me all the time like come on man don't even do that man yo, yo, listen you see how you see how you can pull a demon out of somebody so fast man let that demon protrude man. It is what it is, man. We ain't really worried about him. Go on, kill him. We can keep going with the word of the Lord, man. The Most High has wonderful works. 
You see how you see how you make stuff manifest in front of you to show you the off spirits of our own damn people, man? Can you go back? Can you please go back to Ecclesiastes 77? All spirits, man. I, I we gonna bring this up, man. Ecclesiastes 77, because the, like I said, the most high gave you gave me a better breakdown of Ecclesiastes 77, man. You wanna finish it out before we get there? Alright, kinda good. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 78, and verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob, and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. We got the laws. We got the laws, we got the statutes, we got all that, man. We gotta give it to our children, man. We gotta do all this. Here we go. See, man, this is what we're talking about. This is what Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 is talking about. Read that. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. This is what it Surely is. oppression maketh the wise man mad. What does mad mean? I mean crazy, man. Surely oppression make you goddamn crazy, man. That's what that's what goes on. Our people are legitimately crazy, man. Our people are off as hell, man. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 tells you that our people are crazy. Yeah, we angry. We use that scripture to tell that we're angry, but Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 is telling us that we are mad, man, because we've been oppressed all our damn life, man. We've been so damn oppressed that we go crazy, man. Before you read that, read the rest of that verse. And a gift destroyed the heart. And a gift destroyed the heart, man. We've been oppressed so damn much that we went crazy and a gift destroyed us, man. They said we was free from slavery, man. They gave you they gave you a house. They gave you a home. They told you that if you go to war for us, man, we'll set you free. And they never did it. They never did none of these things, man. So Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 is telling us how oppression made us go crazy as a nation of people, man. Because now we don't, now we thinking that a people that oppressed us and put us in slavery loves us, man. We got we got we we went so crazy that we would rather kill our own people that look just like us that's going through the same things that we do, but we will but when the police pull up, we run like a goddamn scattered roach, man. Like this is what happens, man, but when the men of the Lord is up here, when you standing up front of the men of the Lord. We ain't moving. We ain't gonna budge, man. We're not crazy. We actually clean. We actually, we, our mind is fresh. Our mind is knowing. Because guess what? We know we got a bigger power ahead, man. You gotta deal with him. You ain't gotta deal with us. You gotta deal with the Lord, man. And guess what? You don't wanna deal with the Lord. Because the Lord put your ass to death like it ain't nobody's business, man. We ain't worried about what you got to say or all that BS that you saying out your mouth. Because guess what, man? We ain't got to touch you. The Most High will touch you. The Most High will put you to death, man. The Most High will do these things, man. The Most High will build demons, show us demons, and we understand that, yo, listen, you just crazy because of oppression. You went mad because of oppression. We have sympathy for our people. But guess what, man? Yeah, we get angry because we tired of seeing our people oppressed. We tired of people being crazy for a nation for nations of people that don't give a damn about us psalms 83 is telling you that the nations of people who don't give a damn about you right the edomites the ishmaelites the damn hamites then they're all the damn hamites man the chinese man who is moab who is moab the ammonites who is who is the japanese man right all these nations they hate your damn guts all these nations hate your guts but here you go, want to be crazy over them instead of loving your brother like the most I told you to do, man. Surely your question make a wise man mad. They broke you down, man. They mentally destroyed you, man. During slavery, man. They mentally destroyed our people. But broke them. Did all types of different, all different types of crazy things to you, man. Had you fight your brother. Yo, listen, if you don't kill him, I'm going to kill you. So you fought hard to kill your own damn brother, man. That's what these white, this is what these white people did unto our people, man. This is what Esau and these other nations was doing to our people, man. You go, you just think we're talking about the uh, captivity that happened in America. No, we're talking about the sub-Saharan slave trade, right? That's still going on today. We're going, we're talking about the Mongolian slave trade. We're talking about the Asher, Assyrian slave trade. We talk about the Grecian slave trade. We talk about the Roman captivity. We talk about all different types of captivity. Our people have been oppressed for thousands of years. We ain't just talking about 500 years. 
You talking about thousands of years of oppression, thousands of years of breaking us down to not knowing who we are as a nation of people, thinking that it's susceptible for us to continue to go through things like this, and that's just life, and we just gotta deal with it. No, we don't just gotta deal with it. We gotta deal with what the Most High told us to do, so we can get our own damn kingdom. Let me get Second Edges six and nine. Read. It's the Book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight and verse twenty-eight. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Right, so the Lord gonna smite us with madness, man. When we start following the Lord's statutes and commandments, the Most High said He was gonna smite us with madness, madness. You going crazy, huh? You going crazy? You gotta stop going. Our people gotta stop going crazy. We gotta stop being oppressed, man. We gotta stop. We gotta fight back, man. Fight back. But how are we gonna fight back by following the Lord's statutes and commandments of the Lord, man? Once we start fighting back with following the Lord's statutes and commandments, we continue. We keep the Sabbath, man. We keep the our holy days. We will no longer be oppressed, man. The Most High will stop having us oppressed, and we are gonna leave, right? Read. Book of Second Exodus, chapter six, verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Man, Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, man. Esau, man, got the end of the world. Esau is a so-called white man. Jacob, y'all the Israelites, man. Y'all the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics in this hemisphere, man. Y'all are Jacob. Once Esau will end, man, our world begins and our world is everlasting. That's right. We get an everlasting salvation, man. We get a beautiful time. We get to never have to work again, man. We get everlasting life. We get the we get the everlasting living waters, man. Ever yo, like Shaw Fire say, man, ever living waters, man. That's what we get. We get the rivers of ever living water. We understand, yo, listen, you you wanna know the Bible in and out, man? Guess what? It's gonna be in it, man. You're gonna be able to bring out the Howard Shaw's words like it ain't nobody's business, man. You're gonna be able to like, yo, man, you remember what he said to Nicodemus? Quote it word for word. You're gonna be able to quote the law word for word, man. But like, yo, man, what? Man, you're gonna have to train these other nations to follow the law of commandments. What you think? Who who you think gonna do that, man? Who do you think gonna have to train these other nations to stop doing the abominable works? That's gonna be us. We're gonna know oh, everything. Take over we're gonna have it. I'm about to get out of here. I gotta, we're gonna, I gotta we're gonna like sign this perfect okay. in this time, man. We're gonna do everything perfect because that's how the Lord intended it to be, man. Us to be perfect as we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be better than everybody. We're supposed to do these things. Deuteronomy 76. Take care of that, bro. Bring that out, okay? So, book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. We shall do what? Take the kingdom. And the saints of the Most High, we're going to take the kingdom, man. The saints of the Most High, man, that's the Israelites. And we're going to take the kingdom, and we shall possess the kingdom forever and ever and even ever, right? And that's what the scriptures say. We got to read it, right? Read God. And possess the, the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Right, right. That's what we're going to do, man. The sense of the most high, we're going to take the kingdom. But how do we take the kingdom? First, we got to follow the law, statutes, and commandments, man. We got to come back to the Lord. We got to do the things that the Lord want us to do, man. Stop following all these false idols, all these false gods, all these false religions, and come back unto Him, man. Come back to the Lord, man. Come back to who you are as a nation of people. The nation that the Most High wants you to be, man. The strongest, mightiest nation in the world, right? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people uh -huh. unto himself right. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right, we above all the people on the face of the earth, man. So stop being crazy, man. Stop going to Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Stop going mad, man. Stop doing Deuter Deuteronomy 28 and 28, man. Being cursed with madness. You know what I'm saying? Stop being, stop being cursed with madness, man. Stop being mad. Stop being, stop thinking that being oppressed is normal. Stop thinking when the cops pull up on your black man, that's a normal thing. Stop thinking that, oh man, niggas die every day, B man. Why should I care, man? No, man, that's not a normal thing. You shouldn't be thinking like that. When, when a white, when a white boy get killed, man, it's all black. They, they, they want to know where it happened, who happened. They trying to, they trying, they trying to make sure that it happened. Yo, listen, if a Negro get killed in a white man neighborhood, man, they trying to find whoever killed this nigga, whoever killed him that fast, man. They trying to find him. 
Like, yo, when they, when they kill FPG Duck in Chicago in the white people neighborhood, man, man, yo, listen, they took a year. Made sure they got everything wrapped up just so they could try to not. Just so they could try to not be wrong, man. They're like, yo, listen, this person did it, this person did it, this person did it. Six people got arrested. That's how that's 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 how white people act, man. They like, yo, what ha yo, any crime that's going on here, man, y'all brought that over here? Y'all brought that over here, man? Hey, come on. No, 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 we ain't having that. That's how we should be acting. Man, what yo, my my our hood, our, our community. I don't want you to, I don't want my, none of my brothers to get shot. I don't want none of my brothers to get killed. I don't want none of my brothers to do any of that, huh? I want my brothers to understand we all going through the same struggle. We all going through the same thing. And we just got to help each other get out of that, man. Gather ourselves together as we run in something nice.